Hi, I'm David. And I'm Alexa. And together we are Folk on the Move. We are a couple who travel full time in our self-converted Ford Transit van that you see behind us. Normally the goal with our channel is to show you our tiny nomadic lifestyle as we seek simplicity and adventure, but this is a slight detour because we really wanted to share our build series and how we turned our empty cargo van into a tiny home on wheels. Although we're not technically professional builders, we managed to convert this van using minimal materials and resources, and we're so proud of how it turned out. <laughs> Yeah. Like we cannot wait to show you how we did it. So our goal with this series of van build videos is to be a resource if you're looking to convert your own van or just entertaining if you're curious how we did it. Everything that we used is linked below as well as a link to our blog, folkonthemove.com. We're going to have a write-up of all of these steps so you can check that out too. Let's do it. This video details how we framed the interior of our van from installing furring strips in our bed bump outs to our built-ins, wall panels, and trim finish. After insulating our van with Havelock wool, we framed our van walls and ceiling with 1x3 furring strips. Furring strips are the foundation of our van interior. We secured our ceiling panels, wall panels, and cabinets to our furring strips, so it's very important to consider where you plan to mount these items beforehand so that you install furring strips in the necessary areas. We used a metal drill bit, sheet metal screws, and an electric drill to secure our furring strips to the metal of the van. Be sure to wear eye protection and use a vacuum to suck up metal shavings as you work. And this seems obvious, but make sure you don't screw through the side of your van. There are a lot of spots that have several layers of sheet metal, which are perfect for installing furring strips. There are some spots though where it's only one layer of metal, so trying to screw into that would go straight through the side of the van. After installing our furring strips, we moved on to installing the two bump outs for the head and foot of our bed. We did this because we wanted to install our bed perpendicular to the length of the van, and we needed several extra inches to make sure that the bed would fit that direction. Because there's only one layer of metal behind the bump outs, there's no way to screw the bump out panels in place without screwing through the side of the van, so we had to get creative. Starting with the driver's side, we cut a plywood panel that fit the exact shape of the bump out and then stapled a layer of wool insulation to the back of the panel. Next, we installed additional furring strips at both ends of the bump out so that they overlapped the open space. Then we constructed the frame of the bump out and attached the panel to the back of the frame. Once the bump out was fully constructed, we fit the entire panel behind the end furring strips and used wood screws to secure the bump out panel to the furring strips. Sort of a roundabout process, but it worked. The passenger side bump out was constructed in almost the same way. The big difference here was that we had a window to work around. To do this, we constructed a window frame out of 1x3 pine boards, then cut our bump out panel to fit the bump out space exactly, minus the window and the frame of course. Because we had the same issue as before of not being able to screw into the side of the van, we had to get creative with installing the window frame. So we ended up screwing the window frame into the bump out panel to make one single piece that fit like a glove over the window. This took a lot of time and precise cuts, but it was worth it to have the bed fit the way that it does. Once we had the window frame and panel connected, the installation process was the same as the driver's side bump out. We stapled wool to the back of the panel, constructed the bump out frame, screwed the panel and frame together, then attached the entire piece to the furring strips that overlap the bump out cavity. We repeated this process on the cavity on the forward driver's side to use for built-in storage later on. Constructing the bump outs was a bit of a process, but well worth it in the end. We got bonus storage and the bed was able to go perpendicular, giving us lots of extra forward space in the van. We constructed our bed frame out of two by four boards. We made the frame based off the mattress size we wanted, then screwed the frame to the van using sheet metal screws. We ended up raising the bed frame a few inches from where it's shown here. This gave us some extra storage space in the garage, which we thought was well worth it, although we have to jump to get into bed now. The next step in our process of framing the interior of our van was to add furring strips and wheel well covers in our garage. The wheel well covers help prevent road noise and serve as a nice level platform for our electrical components and our 30 gallon water tank. We constructed our wheel well covers out of half inch plywood, then secured them to the van floor and the wall panel using a pocket jig. We even included some extra wool inside the box to help muffle for road noise. And moving on to our built-in cabinets. 
When we were constructing our bump outs, we intentionally left some space on either side of the driver's side bump outs to include small built-in cabinets between the furring strips. We measured this space and constructed boxes that fit the dimensions exactly. We then screwed the boxes into the furring strips so that the box rests against the back of the bump out panel, effectively closing the box from behind. We love these additions and think they give our van a nice personal touch. With our furring strips, bed bump outs, and built-ins installed, we moved on to our wall panels. We used quarter-inch plywood sheets and made precise cuts so that each sheet covered all of the open space in the van. We attached the sheets to the furring strips using small wood screws, and we covered the heads of the screws with wood putty so they wouldn't show after being painted. Covering the large wall spaces in the van was easy using this process. The real trick was finding creative ways to cover all of the odd corners and angles throughout the van. We particularly struggled with the rear doorway, and rather than piecemeal a wood frame together that matched the angle of the door, we opted for building a frame around the archway, then covering it with quarter inch and half inch plywood. Again, this process took lots of time and lots of patience, but once we had it finished, we felt very happy with the result. Finally, we trimmed every single ugly corner and edge of the van. There were a lot of rough cuts, a lot of weird angles to try to fit together, and we knew throughout the process that trim would be the answer to the ugly edges that we had everywhere in the van. So we trimmed everything and it made a world of difference, turning it from a scrappy looking kids fort into what we consider to be a really lovely home. And a couple coats of white paint and plenty of wood putty makes a big difference as well. We could talk for days about framing the interior of our van, but we will leave it right here for now. That's it, thank you for watching. We really hope this video helps, and remember, all the materials and resources we mentioned are linked below, so check them out. If you liked this video, please consider hitting that like button, as well as subscribing to our channel. Oh, yeah. We're going to continue sharing our tiny nomadic lifestyle on here, and we would love to have you along for the ride. See you soon.